Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So, tonight marks the start of the road to Bound for Glory. And, uh, that's really what happened on tonight's show. We started building storylines, and, uh, we got a couple matches set for Bound for Glory. So, before we get into it, I am, uh, glad that they chose... A different location for Bound for Glory because I'm I'm kind of tired of looking at the Impact Zone. Um, I don't know if it's the way it's set up or just the crowd, but it's just very lackluster and kind of boring. Um, tonight, it seemed like the crowd wasn't really into it, and you know after they're doing all these tapings in a row, I'm sure it, it kind of kills the crowd. Um, I don't know if it's just the lighting as well. There's a lot of things that I just don't care for the impact zone. Um, there was, or there is rumors that apparently after they do the tapings in Ottawa, their plan, there are plans for them to do tapings in New York and Chicago and a couple other areas. So uh, excited to see where it uh, goes from here. So we open the show with uh, Eli Drake celebrating his successful title defense from last week over Johnny Impact. And uh, he comes out and talks about how he single-handedly defeated Johnny Impact, which uh, Chris Adonis didn't was very confused with that statement. Um, and he said that Johnny Impact was not here tonight. He says Cornette's been, you know, he says he's not playing favorites, but he is, and he's stacking the deck against Eli Drake. You know, besides make him defend the title here, he's also making him defend the title in Mexico and in. I guess next week, I guess they said, in Japan, which I think that match already happened. Um, so he says that, thankfully, he's got the night off, but because of how hungry Chris Adonis has looked, he sees that fever in, in his eyes or something like that, whatever he said. And uh, he set a match up for him. And uh, after this happens, Garza Jr. comes out, and apparently that is his opponent. So uh, we get... Chris Adonis versus Garza Jr. And Chris Adonis was in his uh, flood pants, so to speak, uh, or his pants that are rolled up. I don't know. It's an, it's an odd look. But uh, he was obviously not dressed to wrestle. So um, Eli Drake goes on to commentary, and uh, Chris Adonis controls the majority of the match. We see Johnny Impact actually backstage, and at this point Eli gets up from the commentary desk and runs away. Uh, so Garza Jr. starts to gain momentum, and at this point, we see Johnny Impact come out from the back and jump into the ring and start beating down Chris Adonis. So the ref rings the bell, and then Johnny Impact starts beating up Garza Jr. as well. And uh, at this point, Cornette comes out, which I'm, I'm still confused as to why Garza Jr. came out last week, but I guess it made sense to make this match after that happened. Anyway... So Cornette comes out and, uh, you know, he basically says that Eli's always pitting people going for his championship against each other. And uh, Cornette's sick and tired of that. So next week we're going to get Johnny Impact versus Garza Jr. And the winner of this match will face Eli Drake at Bound for Glory. Um, I would assume that Johnny Impact is going to win that match doesn't really make sense for them to book Garza Jr. in the title match. And, I mean, this extends the storyline. I mean, Impact is a big signing. I would expect the title to be on him sooner rather than later. But, hey, we're building toward Bound for Glory. Uh, up next, we got a recap of Bobby Lashley and Moose. And apparently Moose is going to visit Bobby at American Top Team facility later on tonight. Um... I would assume this is going to be another match as they've been building it for quite some time and it seems appropriate to have it then. Then we uh, look back at OVE winning the titles last week and we go to LAX's hideout and Conan is yelling and screaming about uh, not bringing any money in because they're not the tag team champions anymore and you can just see there's all tension between uh, the members. So we go back into the Impact Zone, and uh, Ovi is scheduled for a match against Trey Miguel, I believe his name is, and John Bolin. So this was basically a complete squash match. I don't think these guys got any offense in on Ovi. Uh, it made them look really good, Ovi, that is. 
So uh, they ended up winning with the uh, the high low kick that they've used or a couple times when they first came in. So, like I said, I would assume that we would get a match between a rematch of Victory Road at Bound for Glory, which later on we find out. Um, there is a special stipulation added to the match, though. And like I've been saying, I, I don't know where they go from here as there's no other tag teams that they've really been building up. Um, so uh, maybe they'll take teams from other organizations or something. But I guess we'll see when the time comes. Uh, up next, Sienna is, comes out, and I guess she was going to make a statement about the knockout division or something. I, I don't remember. Impact had uh, made an announcement about that earlier on. So she comes out, and uh, she says that she doesn't have an opponent for Bound for Glory and uh, talks about being inducted into the Hall of Fame this year and all that nonsense. So Gail Kim comes out, and she says that Sienna is a disgrace to the knockout division, in a matter of speaking. And she says that if it wasn't for Taryn Terrell at Destination X, that Gail Kim would be the, the champion right now, which brought Taryn Terrell out. And she said, you know, Gail, you should really be more worried about the one thing you haven't done, and that's beat me, rather than win the title. So this brought uh, Taryn out. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. This brought uh, Allie out. And Allie says that she deserves a title shot, which, because she's Allie, I think that was her exact words. So Karen Jarrett comes out then and makes, I guess you would call a fatal four-way at Bound for Glory between uh, Sienna defending against Taryn Terrell, Gail Kim, and Allie. So I would assume we're going to get a grudge match between Tara, uh, uh, Taya, sorry, Taya Valkyrie and um, Rosemary because it seems like they've been hinting toward that the last couple weeks. And uh, I think we're uh, all looking forward to seeing that match. And it kind of gives all the knockouts something to do, because like I've said, this is a uh, one of the better things that Impact has to offer. Well, So up next we have uh, a segment with uh, Joseph Park and Grado, and uh, Joseph Park is scamming people. I'm sorry, he called them Marks, out of $100 a head to a meet-and-greet with Grado. So they go through the whole meet-and-greet, and afterward, Joseph Park gives Grado his, his cut, which is a very small uh, chunk of money, and uh, Grado kind of looks confused. So I, I would guess that this is probably going to build up between a match between the two. Um, I don't know if we're going to get a Biss back or what the deal is but it seems like it's going that way which is good because we were i wasn't really sure where they were going with this just because it seems like they were going nowhere after the whole um angle with laurel van ness it just seemed to go nowhere but like i said i assume we'll see a match Probably at Bound for Glory. So up next, we had a X Division six-man tag match. Uh, this was announced, I believe, last week. Um, this was Trevor Lee, Caleb Conley, and Andrew Everett, which, oddly enough, I didn't know much about him. I do remember him from the tag team Apocalypto, I believe, that he was in the Helms Dynasty with Trevor Lee. But when I read up on him, apparently he was face when Helms and Trevor Lee kicked him out. And I guess he's a heel again, so whatever. Continuity in wrestling. Uh, they face Sanjay Dutt, Petey Williams, and Matt Seidel. So I guess the whole Matt Seidel out of the X Division storyline has run its course. It was very short, but eh. So um, it's a fun match. A lot of uh, offense, a lot of good high spots. Um, a lot of, you know, hell breaking loose with all six men in the ring. Uh, the finish saw Matt Seidel hitting the shooting star press on Andrew Everett for the win. And after the match, Sanjay grabs the microphone and challenges Trevor Lee for one last title shot at uh, Bound for Glory. Then P. Williams grabs the microphone and says he deserves a title shot. And Matt Seidel then says he deserves a title shot. So they kind of argue amongst themselves a little bit. And uh, Trevor Lee kind of just looks at him and 
walks to the back. So we go backstage after a commercial break, and uh, Petey, Sanjay, and Matt Seidel are all in Cornette's office arguing their points on why they should be should get a title shot and at this point Cornette just kind of leaves his off office and they're just all arguing amongst themselves so I'm guessing we're going to get some sort of uh either number one contendership match maybe in the upcoming weeks or what I would like to see actually is you might as well just take everybody that was in this match tonight and just put them in a six-man ladder match or maybe an ultimate x match or something like that just something just to throw everybody together and then after bound for glory since they'll be in their rebuilding stage because that's when they're changing from wrestling only or whatever they were talking about uh no uh authority figures i believe they said so they'll have a clean slate after this breaking away from gfw if that's the case who knows what's going on um but yeah so, like I said, building up to Bound for Glory, and that's all this show is meant to do, and they did a pretty good job of it. So then we go to America's Top Team facility where Moose pulls up in his vehicle. He gets out, goes in, pushes Dan Lambert, walks into the octagon that they were training in, goes after Lashley. One guy hits him, and then they all beat him up and throw Moose out of the facility. That was it. Just... More building up. So that brings us to the main event, which was Tejano and Phantasma versus EC3 and James Storm. So they gave this match a good amount of time. It's probably started about 9.30. I mean, we had two commercial breaks, which really isn't a huge shock. But, uh, yeah, they let this match breathe, and uh, it, it was good. The uh, the beginning, we saw EC3 and kind of James Storm very hesitant working together. There was a couple times where I think EC3 put his hand out and Storm went to tag and he pulled it away and, you know, so on and so forth. At one point, uh, they started getting on the same page when uh, I think EC3 made the hot tag into James Storm. So mostly back and forth throughout this match. At one point, Pagano comes out and uh, he causes a distraction to James Storm. And this is really when the AAA or Team AAA took advantage of having the extra man out there. So they had the majority of the match under control. And uh, the finish actually saw James Storm trying to suplex Phantasma back into the ring because the action had spilled to the outside. And uh, Pagano grabbed James Storm's legs and Phantasma fell on top of him. Pagano held his legs down, and Phantasma got the win, and Triple A stole one from, I guess, Team GFW, because I, technically when this was taped, that's what they were known as. So after the match, they were talking the announcers throughout the night that we were going to hear from Conan about a, um, talking about their rematch uh, at Bound for Glory for the tag titles, and we are getting a 51-50 street fight at Bound for Glory. So they basically said, we made this match. This is, you know, basically our own, our home turf match and such. So um, that should be a lot of fun. Like I said, these two put on a really good match last week, and I just expect to see it again. Just don't know where the hell they're going to go after that. Um, but yeah, overall a, a solid show. Just for simply, like I stated numerous times, building Bound for Glory. So uh, I'm sure we'll get more details and uh more in depth to the feuds in the coming weeks as we have a month to go so uh yeah this has been my impact wrestling review if you like what you've seen here please like share and subscribe bye